Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iOS Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Science apps for kids and adults. How exciting. And I'll show you a new iPad case for the Pro. Plus augmented reality food. I see you and you see iOS Today. iOS Today is brought to you by Texture. Access the world's most popular magazines anytime, anywhere using your smartphone or tablet. Try it free for 14 days at texture.com slash twit. And by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. Welcome to iOS Today. Leo Laporte here. Megan Maroney over here. Hello. This is the show where we cover iOS, which stands for iOS. I do OS. <laughs> what does iOS stand for? The I stands for nothing. In the I stands for all the I. The, like the iPhone, the I, everything. Yeah, but, but you know, I never really thought about that. It yeah. started with the iMac. Mm -hmm. And then Steve Jobs, when he came back to Apple made a little joke about being the I CEO. And he said, I, in that case, was interim. Mm -hmm. Didn't turn out to be that way. But, uh, oh, somebody's at my door. <laughs> Let me turn that sound off. Uh, but uh, I don't know what it stands for when I, it comes to iMac or iOS. I think it just stands for our general narcissism. I, I, I. I. It's me, OS. <laughs> it's my OS. Yes. OS, of course, stands for operating system. Mm -hmm. And the iOS or i operating system, <laughs> whatever that is, is in the iPad, the iPhone, the Apple Watch, the Apple TV. And that's what we talk about on this mm -hmm. show. I. Yes. And you know what? Speaking of iOS, it is difficult to get uh, our friend, the Amazon Echo, to play iOS today. I uh, got an email from our friend Kenny, yeah. who watches the show, uh, he listens to the show, and he's, he used to be able to, and he can't. And I've been trying to get it to play, and even Patrick even emailed Amazon for some reason. Because other things can. You can say, uh, th and this is, the, this is the syntax I would use, Echo or whatever word you use for your trigger word, listen to, for instance, twit on, and usually I, if if that doesn't work, I say on tune in, mm -hmm. because that's what it uses. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, sh it may be a tune in issue. We should see if iOS today is on tune in. Yeah, it is. Okay. Have, we've we've and checked. If you want to watch us live, if you have an Echo show, the one with the screen, mm -hmm. you can actually watch the video live, mm -hmm. or you can listen live if you have the other Echoes, by saying Echo, listen to twit, now, I, I usually say live, not live, because oh. sometimes she's confused. So if you say Echo, listen to Twit Live on TuneIn or watch Twit Live, it will usually find it, <laughs> at least almost always. Uh, but it, So you could say Echo, with... listen to iOS Today on TuneIn, and it doesn't work. No, if anyone can get it to work, please email me, Megan at twit.tv, because I've tried everything. And it, I think it just doesn't recognize, and that's what Amazon said in their email back to Patrick. Like, it's they're still working on it, and iOS that might is be complicated. Confusing it. Yeah. Or maybe Amazon is trying to remove the Mentions term iOS, iOS well, would be from possible. Alexa's vocabulary. Yeah. But anyway, we digress. Today we're going to talk about science. Well, we were inspired by the eclipse, which is the total eclipse, which is coming uh, next month in three weeks, August 21st, right, John? F four weeks from today. And, uh, and um, John, in fact, going up to uh, Oregon to watch it. Totality, which means a, a total eclipse, the sun will be completely obscured by the moon's shadow, will happen uh, in a band across the United States, which hasn't happened in a while. And almost everybody in, uh, in the United States will get some eclipse uh, i was looking that nasa has a map uh which you can click on any locale in the u.s or i guess i guess in the world and it'll tell you how much of the sun will be obscured for instance in san francisco it'll be about here where we are 71 percent in la it'll be about 61 percent but that's more than you think there'll just be a little crescent sun here there's the map of uh, totality which is kind of cool and uh and so 
what's good is that even though you may not be in Oregon or one of the areas where you're going to get a total eclipse, you'll get a pretty good eclipse. Remember not to look at the sun ever, ever, ever. Even, uh, you know, if it's just a little fragment, a sliver, you might think, oh, that's not so bright, but that actually can still burn a hole in your, in your retina. Uh, the only time it's completely safe is totality, but that's so risky because it's only total for a, a minute or two, depending on where you are. And then it won't be. Then, then it'll start uh, emitting from the other side as the, as the moon moves across. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty exciting. So we thought, let's do some science-y things, including mm -hmm. eclipse things for today's show. Yeah, because on the screensavers on Saturday, we talked to Nicola Fox, who was a NASA scientist. Wasn't that fun? It was great. She told us about their solar probe. They're trying to get to the sun or to the, they're trying to get to, uh, to orbit close enough to the sun to do some science. And she said, uh, NASA has an app called Globe Observer, and it will allow you to participate in science you take pictures uh, of the eclipse and then send them so they can see everywhere what's going on. So now, wh what do you think about uh, aiming your camera at the eclipse, your iPhone camera? What do I think about it? You, can I aim my camera at the, um, they at say the eclipse? You, they, now, so John's going to take pictures of the eclipse. You won't see anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can aim your camera, your iPhone at the sun now, and mm -hmm. you just get this big flare. And yeah, I guess it protects itself somehow. You wouldn't want to point it there for too long a time. Um, yeah, I guess you could try to take a picture with your iPhone. And it would certainly, if you're doing that, be safe to look at the iPhone screen. That's not going to be bright enough to hurt your eyes. But never, ever at the sun directly. Okay. And if you have a good camera, you'll probably want to protect it. John has purchased a filter for uh, his camera that has uh, a very, it's basically like a welder's glass. Uh, in fact, I think you're going to use a welder's glass because the filters are 150 bucks. If you get a, if you go to B and H Photo, they have a whole article on photographing eclipses, and they tell you what kind of filter. And it's a, vi it's so dark you can't see through it, but you will be able to see the sun. That's how bright the sun is uh, through it. It's welding glass would be another example. If you are going to do uh, photography, one of the things you'll want to know is where to aim it. In fact, the best thing to do if you're going to do even iPhone photography is to kind of plot it out ahead of time. Certainly practice. And then the the thing that makes I think uh, pictures of the moon or eclipses interesting is not just the picture by itself, but the surroundings. You know, the moon is always more interesting when it's coming up and you see buildings and things like this. This is a program called the Photographer's Ephemeris. T-P-E. And if you're a serious photographer and you're seriously doing astronomical photography, it's mostly useful, you know, day in, day out for pictures of the moon. This will tell you, this is where we are right now. By the way, $8.99. This is the iPad version. There's an iPhone version. There's also an Android version. And it tells you everything you need to know. For instance, sunrise, moonrise, sunset. Um, and then it has some other things that I don't like. Nautical a sunset. Crescent moon, best at 9.14 p.m. Uh, and it, then it also, let's see, also what you'll see is angles. So as I'm looking at this, I'm seeing different angles. Now, what we can also do is we can skip ahead in time. And so that may be what you're going to want to do is go to, let's try, shall we go to August 21st? Yeah. And see what we're going to see. The eclipse around here will be right about this time of day, actually. Um, and so I can go here and we can see where the sun will be shining and be shining right over the Dow Phar Pharmaceutical Sciences oh, building. Awesome. So that's a great, that's a great picture <laughs> right there. Actually, the sun will be pretty high, won't it, uh, by then, John? So we may not be able to get any, if maybe though, if you're, you know, down low, you'll be able to get something in it. Uh, you, but that's why you need something like this is to kind of plan it You see, we can even see that the sun is going to be eclipsed here, which is, which is kind of cool. So this is, I mean, I can, this thing has so much information in it. If you're a photographer uh, using ephemeris, that means ephemeris is like tide tables. Using ephemeris from books and so forth may be familiar to you. This is a program that lets you kind of do it. Here's a 3D version, which is kind of neat. Let's you do it um, on your iPad and plot your sight lines, plot how you're going to shoot that picture uh, to make it an interesting picture. So you'll know you'll have to be facing you know, and this this is the direction the sun will be coming from. So this is what will be in the background. And in fact, here uh, we we might have a really interesting shot because 
the, the, the mountains, the Sonoma Mountain is out here. So we might be able to, and, and this is what you want to do, and if you want to get Sonoma Mountain in the picture, you might have to move over here to Stony Butt to uh, really get that picture with the Sonoma Mountain in the background. This is the kind of app that will help you do that. It is, uh, I think, a really cool way of planning for your eclipse shoot if you want to do it. Yeah, so the Globe Observer, I have this up on my iPad now. Um, the new app is unlocked August 18th, so not quite yet. Uh, but that you can take pictures of the, the clouds and uh, that sort of thing. So right now you can actually take pictures of clouds and add to science or take pictures of mosquitoes. Oh, that would be and valuable. Add to science. So, so this, is, this is like to, uh, to, to become uh, a scientific observer yeah a helper with science helper. you capture the t data and you can identify the the cloud types and then you send it up and so you know with all of this crowdsourcing you can uh help science it is estimated this will be the most photographed eclipse of all time i can't i think that that's a given mm -hmm. uh just because of many the time cameras? we live in yeah. yeah i'm gonna just i'm just gonna observe it i'm gonna just be there it's you know, a fun it. thing to do, and, you, and of course, a lot of kids will be watching it, and they'll be making pinhole cameras, which mm -hmm. is fun. You poke a hole in a shoebox, for instance, and then shine it over your shoulder, and you can see the eclipse in the back of the shoebox. But do you remember? Maybe you don't. But the last time we had eclipse, which wasn't so long ago, we had a partial eclipse. That w when it shines through the tree leaves, they become pinhole cameras, and you may see hundreds of images of the eclipsed uh, crescent sun. Uh, projected in effect by a tree. It's kind of fun. Yeah. I'm looking I'm, forward to that. I am looking forward to it too. Yeah, yeah. So, More science. Okay. So similar to the app that I just showed, the Globe Observer that we heard about, there's one called iNaturalist. Have you heard of iNaturalist? No, that sounds it, cool. It uh, helps you identify the science around you. And then again, you can participate in the observations. So uh, it helps... So I took this picture, let's, let's look, observe. So I'm, I can click observe. If I'm out in the wilderness, I could take a picture. Um, like, let's see if it knows what your hand is. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, and let's see, what do you see? What's going to load some suggestions? Do you think it'll recognize a hand on an iPad? A human. There's look, a human. There you are. Or you're a honeybee or an <laughs> Asian lady beetle. Perhaps you're an Asian lady beetle. I could be. So let's actually take uh, some some wilderness, that, some, a picture that I, you can, if, you know, if I uh, want to enjoy my surroundings, take a bunch of pictures and then I'm at home later and I will, let's find some nature here. Uh, I took a picture of this sunflower with a bee on it. I'm going to see if it recognizes that. I click next and see what the suggestions are. So it tells me where I took it and everything. Um, and I could either look up the species by name or look sunflowers. So it recognize this is pretty good. It recognized the sunflower and the bee that on that picture. Hmm. So then I can learn more about the common sunflower. That's Hilianthus. really a digression having looking at my looked at my hand, you know. <laughs> Studying the sunflower and the bee. Well, that was actually a picture of a. a oh, sunflower. you actually and had one. Yes, oh. and there's the Chilean. I'm sorry, I wasn't following. I know. I know closely. you got a little bit distracted. That's okay. <laughs> um, and here, like, I honestly wanted to know. Do you know what this flower is? Don't cheat. Uh, yeah, that's the honey bucket. No. No. Is that well? It does look like a honey bucket. It's a foxglove. That's a foxglove. Don't eat it, kids, because unless you're having a heart attack, because it's poisonous. What if I already ate it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll rush you to the hospital. Okay, iNaturalist. You can also join projects. So there's all these projects uh, nearby. So I can see, like, look at all the, these, like, McNear School. That's where your kids went. They have, they're working on a project. Uh, Petaluma High. So you oh, can that's see neat. These are of, local uh, mm -hmm. local schools. Yeah, and what they, look, there's a domestic cool dog. That? So obviously people are using this in school. So if you're an educator, this could be helpful so that uh, you can help your students learn about what's on the ground. For How example, this isopod. That? It's an isopod. Mm -hmm. In order of paracarid crustacean. Oh, we call them, uh, what do we call pill those? Bugs. those are the pill bugs. Or roly polies. Roly polies, yeah. Depending on where you grew up, it's either a roly poly yeah. or a pill bug. Roly polies, bug. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what it's called, an isopod for reals? Mm -hmm. Isopod. How interesting. The name derives from the Greek roots iso, meaning same. Same. Mm -hmm. Iso. It's an isopod. Do you have anything or shall I keep going? Well, I, I was going to mention the Smithsonian Channel. Oh, yeah. Because uh, there are, you know, there's lots of science channels uh, and lots of, uh, you know, there's discovery and so forth. But most of those require a subscription 
Uh, uh, By 1955, Americans are experiencing a golden decade. This isn't exactly science, but it's kind of fun. Uh, America is the richest country in the world. Yes. Anyway, we that's this is about the 50s, but this is the Smithsonian Channel, which has a lot of uh, great uh, videos, including a lot of science videos. Let me see if I can find something uh, more scientific here. Evil Knievel's famous Snake River jump. You know, here, how about three, UFO evidence? That's pseudoscience. Pseudoscience. <laughs> Um, so you don't have to have a cable subscription to watch these, which is which is one of the things I like about this. Also, the the length of these varies. So this was a very short one; it's just two minutes. Um, but they have full length shows and shorts and all sorts of stuff. We, I guess, it's fair that this should be free. We paid for it with our tax dollars, mm -hmm. right? True. So this is the nation's museum, the Smithsonian, and Smithsonian, of course, covers more than just. Uh, just science but right, there, there's the natural history this actually is a great app just to have in case you know you get bored uh, there's all sorts of stuff in here shark facts it's shark week it is shark week by the way spoiler alert michael phelps did not beat that shark on saturday he didn't nor was he even swimming with the shark there I'm wasn't even a shark near him no <laughs> it was a time trial mm -hmm. Uh, so there you go. Yeah. Um, 18, how about this? 18 engineering wonders of the world. Oh. See, that's fun. And if you're planning a trip to D.C. Uh, and planning on oh. going to any of the museums, download the apps on your iPhone yeah. first before you go because they're super helpful. Oh, uh, the Smithsonian is so, is so fun. And I especially like the Air and Space Museum, the new yes. Air and Space Museum. The Udvar Hazy. Ud Udvar Hazy. Is that oh, how you pronounce yeah. it? Yep. Udvar Hazy. I, I didn't know that. That's yeah. Good He's know. the rich guy that paid Apparently for Apparently there's a cow. Oh, there's an ad in here. That's why it's uh, that's free. why it's free. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of that was a short ad. Oh, that guy, Geico wasn't part of nat the United no. States natural history. No, it wasn't. Okay. Uh, I have so many. I'm gonna, I'm I know. Gonna why don't you going. do some more? There's okay. so many good ones. So science, you can't have science without math, right? Don't you That's agree? right. Do Science agree? is math applied or something. I don't know. Have you ever used the MyScript calculator? Yeah, I love MyScript. I love the MyScript yeah, calculator. Yeah. Okay, so let's just delete that. Because you, 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 you write. Yeah. And it's really good with a pro. 387 right? times 465 equals. Nice. Yeah. And then if I want to save that, I can hold it. Oh, what, oh, let's see. Let's try that again. Four times 94. Seven. Now it'll do more sophisticated stuff. Yes, so I can save that. But yeah, like if I want to do pi times pi times four equals. Nice. I don't know why I did pi to the it's third pi power. Pi cubed, but it will do powers, which is pi nice. Yes, it will. Yeah, you can um, do, and then you can see like your if you made this if you regularly make this. See, it'll do integrals it. and uh, and it'll do other kind of yeah. sophisticated stuff, quadratics. I love this. It is really well done because I am I am feeling like a part of hand to paper or you know Apple pencil to to iPad is how you learn. Like, I feel it's like kind that. kind of natural, And yeah. losing that with just a calculator. Yeah. I mean, we had the discussion because uh, my daughter needs a graphing calculator and I was asking for, um, you know, for help with that. Yeah, and everyone was like, why do they need that? They have, you they know, there's have so it. many apps. And I think it's because they don't want them to use a phone or a tablet. Right, because you cheat. Because you could cheat. But huh. it is a shame. And these are expensive. They're like a hundred bucks. Right. And you said you were going to give me one of your old if ones. If I could find one, I will. Mm -hmm. I'll look around. It's on video. There are free graphing calculators. There's so many graphing calculators on the iPad. But I think that's really the reason is that they don't, they just don't want you to, I mean, this is an in effect, these are in effect HP 85s and other uh, typical uh, that you would buy calculators. However, uh, they don't want you to have access to the rest right. of the iPad. So, so there's a yeah. TI-84. Yeah, TI-87 is what I've been told to get. Mm -hmm. I can keep going. Keep well, going. This one, don't this stop. This is one that you'll probably uh, have more knowledge of than I do. The Wolfram Alpha I app. love it. And I've recommended this many, many times. This can be also a scientific calculator, by the way. You can ask it all sorts of things. Stephen Wolfram is a, a super genius one of the most amazing people alive today. And one of the things they've been doing at Wolfram Alpha for, I think, almost a decade, maybe even more, is entering data into the system. So this is a system uh, that uh, basically is kind of uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning. You can type any query into it, and it will attempt to understand it and then solve it. But it can be simple things like, you know, your name 
and how many people are named that and when the peak you know if you just type in megan you'll see uh information about that not not my whole name but oh. i don't think it's going to do anything but oh. leo would 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 do something well wow. so you oh look it found the wikipedia <coughs> entry so mm -hmm. um yeah i can do that here's the frequency is that the frequency of uh that's your wikipedia page hits wow <laughs> people don't use wikipedia anymore let's get rid of that <laughs> <laughs> uh i love wolf from alpha now it's not free uh you can use it for free on the web um uh, and i think what he's trying to do uh with wolfram alpha on um on the ipad is uh is kind of help support the project yeah well this is amazing i mean every student should have should have, know about wolfram alpha and and uh, be proficient in using it there is a little skill involved in creating queries but that's what you see on the left there is some sample queries to give you an idea of the kinds of things you can ask it you know my father-in-law who was uh a um, science teacher in high school, Jennifer's dad, uh, used to love to give us puzzlers. Uh -huh. And, uh, and uh, for instance, he said, well, how much would one centimeter of water over an acre weigh? <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and you're supposed to figure that out in your head. But it turns out you can just ask Wolfram Alpha and it will answer it for you. After I spent a lot of time calculating it, I figured out I could ask Wolfram Alpha. So it's great to know. That brings up a good point. There's been some controversy. Wolfram Alpha has been in the news about some cheating. There was, you know, in the general well, news. Smarter like smarter than the average bear. And not only that, like it explains how it got there, right? Because that's, that's what we have. You have with all of our devices and all our calculators and all our iPad apps, we're teaching kids more of how you got there now, right? Not the Answer. Which is appropriate because right. facts basically are available at the touch of a mouse. Mm -hmm. But uh, understanding and creating new uh, inferences and new uh, connections is a real skill that mm -hmm. only humans at this point are very good at. And so that, if you, my, this is another thing that that uh, 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 my father-in-law said. He said when we gave him an iPad, and he said, "Why?" I mean, he just was blown away by it. Uh, and he said, if Copernicus had had this, he spent Copernicus spent most of his life creating the instruments to gather facts, the teles the telescopes, it's grinding lenses, and all of this. Mm -hmm. If he'd had that, that, all the information at his fingertips, he could have come to his conclusions and maybe many more much quicker. So we're in that situation mm -hmm. these days where we don't have to spend as much time observing. We have facts at our fingertips now. It's about what you can do with it. So I agree with you on that. Yeah. But then what about well? From I mean, there was a, a story in Wired recently about how a math teacher gave a students a really difficult problem that they, she did not expect them to be able to solve, and they had to show they, their work. And they all they showed no, they did using Wolfram Alpha oh, because Wolfram Alpha goes Shows from steps work. to step. <laughs> but it was all exactly the same. Yeah. And so there was a lot of like, oh, we have these tools, kids are cheating. But what I think you know, and you, as you know, I'm married to a teacher. Use yeah, yeah, there's the story. Yeah. Um, you know, a good teacher knows when a kid is cheating. Sure. Even if, you know, it's it's like Marco doesn't use all those tools where you cut and paste, uh, you know, the sentences or a paragraph right. from a, an essay. He knows. Like, he'll read an essay if you know. But I mean, he also works at a private school where he doesn't have 30 students in every class. But he knows, like, hey, you know, you're not... Well, you, you can't. You, I, I've seen the work you've done in the past, and you. This you, doesn't this match, doesn't it. match right. it. So I think that's the the impetus. They're also that is the great tools for teachers to use. I mean, just as kids have Google, teachers have uh, plagiarism tools. Google's one of them, but they have also software that will find plagiarism. Right, so. but then he, you know, he's also experienced students I who think, have people write their essays for them, like right. a tutor. Right. So that's not going to show up. So no, you have to know you your student. No, but you will recognize it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah I think. Uh, that's one of the reasons, by the way, you have to buy a TI eighty seven is mm -hmm. because they the don't cheating. want they don't want your kid to have access mm -hmm. not only to a graphing calculator on her iPad but also on, on Wolfram Alpha. Right, exactly. I agree. It Wolfram Alpha is is a miracle, and everybody should should get to know it and use it. Yeah, it's amazing. It's actually just a lot of fun. Yeah, search just for playing your name. around for it. Yeah. yeah, or if you want to do comparisons of companies, you could do Apple. Uh, versus Exxon, for instance. Mm. If you just type in Apple versus Exxon, it'll show you the relative strengths, uh, you know, financial strengths of each company. It's very interesting. Mm. Fascinating stuff. I'm so, trying to download, but it's very large. So uh, I was it, when I was started talking about uh, John, uh, my father-in-law, I, I remember that the program that we showed him that blew him away and made him think about Copernicus was called The Elements. This is one of the very first iPad 
uh, applications, but it's gigabytes in size, and I'm mm -hmm. trying to download it now, and frankly, well, it's going to take too long. It's, oh. I can show you the kid version of that if you'd like. Well, this is this is probably it, right? Or you have a little kid version. Little Alchemy. Have you ever seen oh, that? Oh, no. Um, so you have all your elements here, and I've actually unlocked a few, um, and then you get to move them. So if I uh, mix, let's see, ocean and salt... Oh, no, I can't. Oh, ocean. Let's see. If I mix water and fire, I get steam. If I mix earth. Oh, this is and, so you could do a chemistry. Yeah. And the ocean. Oh, okay. I get nothing. Yeah. I get earth and water. What do I get? <gasps> mud. What if I mix salt and mud? Nothing. <laughs> what if I mix steam and mud? Nothing. What if I mix fire and mud? <gasps> what do you? I got a brick. So what if I mix a brick and a brick? I get a wall. What if I mix another brick? Kids another will brick like and this a wall. Because, <laughs> because they they kind of do this with uh, in uh, Minecraft. This will kind of remind them of mm -hmm. Minecraft. A little, a little bit, bit. Yeah. yeah. So a little alchemy. My kids learned about this in school. Um, so brick and an ocean. And you just keep guessing air and a wall. Air and the sea. Air, air, air. So little alchemy is free. And I've got the elements now. Let okay, me just, good. Let me just show you. And, and, and you need to listen to this because when it first uh, starts off, it gives you um, uh, Tom Lehrer's very famous song where he's, he's made a song of all the names of the elements. And it shows you each element as he sings it. Let's just, let's just watch this for a second. There's antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, americium, ruthenium, uranium, europium, zirconium, Now, for those of you not watching video, we're seeing pictures of each of these elements plus their position in the periodic table. And if I skip through the song and just pick an element, it's really fun. So Copernicum, for instance, which is named after... Copernicus. Nicholas Copernicus. We were just talking about him. Mm -hmm. And we can learn about the element. Uh, oops. This is the elements in action. I don't want to buy that. So how do I cancel that? Here. There we go. Uh, you can learn about... Uh, I love this kind of stuff. Here's silver. You can learn about... This is a great for a student. It's it's spectral table here. Um, what... It, what uh, what its electronegativity, its boiling point, percent in the sun, in the universe, in the crust. Uh, this, by the way, comes from Wolfram Alpha. So that's kind of neat uh, that they're using some of the Wolfram Alpha uh, stuff. Uh, and somebody in the chat room mentioned, and I'll mention it real quickly, uh, it's beyond my uh, canon ability, but the most popular mathematics program uh, in, the, in the world for teaching math is called MATLAB. Hmm. And now this, you have to have MATLAB on your computer uh, or the MathWorks Cloud. So you, the, the, the app is free, but, but it's a mobile uh, partner to your paid, and it's fairly expensive, mm -hmm. MATLAB subscription. So I just wanted to mention it. Thank you, Chatroom, for reminding me of that because um, that's a, that, is, that is a serious mathematics tool. In fact, there are a lot of very interesting tools like that like the Jupyter Notebooks, for instance, using Python, that a lot of students will be using in math class on an iPad. I have one more. Yes, dear. One more. Socratic. And this gets back to the homework help versus... The Socratic method? Yes. The, it comes from the Socratic method, we, you know, how, how you get at an answer. So Socratic lets you point your iPad at a... Uh, question at your homework, basically. I'll show an example because I don't have homework. So you move your phone, uh, so it's a, it's an iPhone app, and see there's my homework, and I just take a picture of it, and a balloon has a volume of 2.9 liters at 320 Kelvin. If the temperature is raised 343K, what will the volume be? All right, mathematicians out there, see? And so <laughs> it tells challenge. you how wow. you get at the method. So there's a Q&A. You can use the unitary method, of course. You could use the gas law. So it kind of goes through the explanations. Um, so if your, if kids, your parents are not so great at math, it links to a Khan Academy video about that, um, all the laws. This is a great, this is a great app. Um, you know, because everybody, 
it's I hear this a lot from parents that their kids, even in like fifth or sixth grade, their math has gone beyond. It's done a Google search <laughs> beyond what they know. And so Socratic uh, for parents out there is a good Good. So you take take the picture of your kid's homework, then you can help, then you That's memorize great. everything and pretend you already know. You pretend you already know. That's great, because I, I would do that. I would sit there while they're doing their Algebra 2 homework, Googling, how do you solve a book? Because I studied it, but I don't remember. Who I know. remembers And that, they do right? it differently now, too. Uh, do they? But they do they have, a little bit. They have different techniques. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This is fun. I like it. I'm, I forgot all about the elements. I haven't looked at this in years. And I, I think if you've got a kid who's interested in uh, in chemistry or science, cadmium. You know what we do with cadmium? We put it in I don't iPhones. know. Batteries, right? The treatment with dichromate gives these cadmium pla cadmium plated castle nuts a gold color. You can. It's very visual. It's fun. I really have to say, um, they they've done a nice job uh, with this. And what's interesting is I haven't seen it in a while, and they've they've added a lot of new stuff to it. So that's the elements again. But uh, I just I think it's so much fun to and an iPad is such a natural way to explore and learn. It's the elements is available as a book. In fact, it probably I think was a coffee table book before it was an iPad app. But it's so much more fun in the in the iPad world. Mm -hmm. There's some ideas for you. You know where else you can learn about science? I bet it's on this little piece of blue paper. Magazines. I right oh, so it's texture time. Magazines. Let me just launch my texture. Texture is kind of like Netflix for magazines. Now, I love reading magazines. Almost every magazine, you know, uh, every month has at least one article I want to read. I'm just thinking like Rolling Stone. I probably wouldn't subscribe to Rolling Stone, but I, 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 there's definitely stuff in there I, I would want to read, maybe an article or two uh, every year or, or more. Uh, so what's nice is I have that. I have all the magazines, 200 plus magazines. Now here we're seeing the highlights section of Texture. This is nice. So you don't have to know what's in each magazine or, or go through each magazine to find articles you're interested in. New and noteworthy stories here picked by the editorial team. Charlize Theron gives 007 a run for his money from W Magazine. Google's elite hacker SWAT team versus everyone. That's from Fortune Magazine. And if you say, hey, I would like to read about, um, let's see, the college experience overseas, I can open it. And it's just, this is from Town & Country, it's just like the paper magazine. You can swipe through the articles. Every page that's on the newsstand is there. And because it's an iPad, of course, you can zoom in and make it easier to read. You can look at pictures. That's another thing that I really have to say I love about texture. If you're a fan of the photographic magazines, you know, like National Geographic, I like Dwell, uh, you can go into these magazines. Here's Shutterbug. And you're going to see, oh, notice this. Would you like to automatically download the, I can favorite a magazine, turn on auto download, and then I don't have to remember if I'm getting on a plane or going somewhere where there's no internet to get this magazine ahead of time. It's like you've got a stack of magazines in your iPad or your iPhone. Yeah, it works on an iPhone well too and i was about to say this when you're a photographic uh, lover of photography the pictures in these magazines frankly look better than they do in the magazine in the magazine they've got you know the limitations of the printing press here we can actually see the picture as the photographer intended it we can zoom in on it and and this makes it i in my opinion even better than reading it on paper in fact so many of these magazines are better frankly on the uh, iPad or the iPhone. I get the New Yorker. I used to get the paper one. I just have all this New Yorker guilt because I would never read them and I'd pile them up and the coffee table practically collapsed under the weight. Uh, uh, there, there's the Vanity Fair cover with Serena uh, uh, on it. And let's see, I'm not going to download that automatically. But I just want to go through it so you can see you get the table of contents and you can jump into any story just like that. And then swipe through it. There's also features that you don't get uh, in um, in uh, traditional magazines. There's video in some cases. I love the highlights because that makes it easy to find stuff. You can break it down by categories. 200 plus magazines. Now, how much would you pay if you subscribe to 200 magazines? It'd be thousands of dollars a year, right? If you even just bought an issue or two every month, it'd cost more than the cost of all 200 magazines, every page, T less than 10 bucks a month and right now you can get it absolutely free this is texture if you go to texture.com slash twit texture.com slash twit some of the best journalism is still being done in fact 
it's this is the last bastion in some cases of great journalism in magazines. I love I'm I'm a fan of boating, right? I'm really fantasizing about boats so I can I can read about boats. By the way, it's all the ads too. And you may say, well, I don't want the ads, but if you're a boating fanatic, part of the reason you get a boating magazine is to look at the ads, right? And then of course, six inflatable tow toys to ride this season. I'm living for this article. Anyway. <laughs> Texture.com slash twit. Two weeks free. Set it up. Try it. This is summertime is the best time for texture. You're about to go on vacation. I wouldn't I tell you what, before I get on a plane, I make sure I got all my magazines downloaded on texture. Texture.com slash twit. All right, I see you have a new case there. Oh, you want me to talk about yes. this a little bit? Yeah. So we actually did talk about this because I, when I bought the iPad Pro, this is obviously the 10.5 inch iPad Pro. I, I, uh, I bought the Apple Smart keyboard. That's a hundred sixty dollars, and it's kind of flimsy. Doesn't really protect the back of it at all. Falls off easily. So I thought there might be other companies providing and it, keyboards. But remember that one of the things. I'm looking for, you're not so much, but one of the things I'm looking for, because I have a pro, is something that will work with the iPad Pro's smart connector. That's those three dots on the bottom here. This is what it can attach to a keyboard and power it. On the smart keyboard, it powers it. Uh, you're not using that. You're using a Bluetooth keyboard, so you have to remember to charge it. Mm -hmm. And turn it on and off. And turn it on and off. So uh, this, is, this is one of the few keyboards uh, and cases that supports it. Now, because it supports the smart connector, just like the Apple keyboard, it's detachable. So you don't have to have it. In fact, this is the Logitech Slim Combo case. It's a lot cheaper than the Apple smart keyboard. And it has a lot more uh, features, in my opinion. This is $129. It has a loop for the pencil. So you never have to remember where you put your pencil. Plus, as you know, the nib of the pencil is fragile. And mm -hmm. so you want to put it somewhere where it's protected. Uh, it also has a hard cover back. And I love this. The stand, you know, I always had problems with the, uh, with the Apple keyboard because the stand was so wobbly jobbly that I, you know, it would fall over and stuff like that. And, and there was only one angle you could have on it. This has any number of angles. You can even lie it flat if you want. So this is from about, I don't know, 20 degrees to all the way up to almost uh, completely upright and anywhere in between. It's a continuous thing. So get the angle just right. Uh, I like that feature. Um, and then if this, of course, closes up. This is a case. It's a back. So it, it, it also can just be used as a case and it's got all the appropriate openings for everything. Um, it doesn't do uh, it doesn't do the uh, rubber hard rubber buttons for anything except for the volume uh, control. Uh, otherwise, you have access to the uh, on-off. No, I guess the on-off switch mm -hmm. also has a button. I don't like that on the Logitech. The the button. Yeah, well, I have the Logitech for the the first iPad Pro. The yeah, and that was pretty clunky. This is they call this the slim combo, and I think it is a little lighter and a little slimmer. The keyboard is pretty remarkable. Let me let me show you the keyboard. Uh, I think it's a very good keyboard, and this is hard plastic, so it's a little bit more solid than the Apple uh, keyboard. And it has uh, it's specifically for the iPad. So notice it has the iPad lock button uh, right there. Now that's one negative because it's right above the delete key. And you know if you're a little sloppy, sometimes you turn off the uh, the iPad instead of hitting backspace. Mm -hmm. It has a, you know the other key, special keys the the world key, which switches keyboards, uh, control, option, and command are here. So you can do all the command, cut and paste stuff. Uh, it has full arrow keys too. This is a real keyboard. And additionally, one thing that the Apple keyboard doesn't do, it's backlit. Mm. Now, I don't know if that's important to you. I, I often use an iPad in the dark or at night or in bed. And so having a keyboard that lights up is important. And all of this is powered by the smart connector. So... You don't have to charge. Remember to charge this keyboard. Now, one thing I do notice is that when I first use it, often it doesn't see the keyboard. Uh, it sees it, I guess, because it's not popping up the on-screen keyboard, which it would do if it didn't see the keyboard. But the keyboard's not functional. Sometimes I have to detach it and reattach it to wake it up. Uh, but... There you go. This is a, a rubber, soft rubber uh, protector so that when you close the keyboard, uh, it's not hitting the screen in any way. And so this is the full package. And it's a lot smaller than the old Logitech uh, keyboard case that we got with our first 
iPad Pros. Uh, it, this does fall off a little bit, which is, you oh. know, this is, well, it's just not, oh, yeah. it's like the smart keyboard cover. It's not mm -hmm. super strong on here. Uh, you can see the, the backlighting there, which is quite strong and, and quite good. It won't, it's, I have it on automatic, so it's going to turn off because it says, oh, you're in bright light. I'm not going to waste battery on, uh, on doing that. Uh, what else can I tell you? I, well, I, I think I... it's a good price. It's hard plastic. It's not aesthetic, particularly. Um, but I, I think for somebody who's looking for an alternative to Apple's smart keyboard, this is one of the few that actually works with a smart connector. I have not. I have been frustrated with a smart connector, I will tell you. And I thought it was just the old iPad, but the new iPad, too. Um, or maybe it was my smart keyboard, because I've been using the old smart keyboard for the 9.7 with the 10.5. But one of the things I love about having guests come to the studio, we have a we wonderful try other, other people's guest. Cases. He uh, <laughs> suggested a case that I immediately bought, um, the Como. You already uh, bought it. I bought it. K-H-O-M-O. It's, it, yeah. so it's, for, it's $14.95, $15. It comes, it's just for the back, so it fits with the smart uh, the Apple Smart Keyboard, but I, and as you can see, I'm using the Magic Keyboard. Well, the price is right. Yeah, but exactly. But again, you spend a lot of money on that Smart Keyboard. That's an mm -hmm. expense. Apple really overcharges for that. And then you have two separate things. And again, I right. still have to charge this and remember to turn it off and on. But thank you for the recommendation. Um, I'm excited we can show that off yeah. next week. Okay, we need to talk about something. Uh-oh. We need to talk about The Rock. This. Yeah, this... <laughs> Peeved me. Really? I love The Rock. I have a special place Why in my heart. I love The I Rock. I just find him so charming. He's cute. But this, it's not The Rock I have a problem with. Okay. It's, it's basically an Apple ad. So, right. so The what? Rock tweeted that he his next movie was going to be The Rock versus Siri. And, and it's not a movie, it's an ad. Can we watch a little bit of it? With that? I haven't that seen be it yet. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's a funny I want to dominate the day like The Rock is where it is in the... There we go. This one's for Earth. This one is for Earth. Bingo. Boom. Love that one. Felt it. Yeah, felt good. Hey, Siri, read my schedule. You have 25 appointments at 7.15. Oh, 720. Look. You're on the telly. With so many projects in the works, it seems like Dwayne Johnson can't possibly take on any more. Oh, that sounds like a challenge. Hey, Dwayne, where are we going, buddy? Wayne, buddy. Hey Siri, show me my life goals list. I found 10 reminders. Thank you very much. Oh. Hey Siri, give me a lift ride to LAX. Lift can get you a lift in 60 seconds. Mind if I drive? I know a shortcut. You're... Yeah. <laughs> It is funny. Moment. Watch the rest. It's only, I don't know, two, two three minutes long. But um, I there, I learned some things. What did you learn? Did you know that Siri can, you can say, hey, Siri, take a selfie? Yeah, I did know that. I did not know that. And Of course, The Rock knew that, too. The Rock knew that. <laughs> um, yes, Siri doesn't always work as you would like her to. The Rock and is former professional wrestler Dwayne Johnson soon to be candidate for president of the United States. Star of the mummy. Star of the mummy, which is not exactly a, a credit I would celebrate. But anyway, uh, you know, he's, I like The Rock. Yeah. He's funny. He at least is self-deprecating. He makes fun of himself. Yes. Uh, <laughs> if you haven't seen him on Saturday Night Live, I mean, you're yeah. missing out. The thing, I, the issue I had was, it's you know, it's just an, it, 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 he may, it's, everybody's excited about an, a, a movie with Siri, but it's an ad. Mm -hmm. It's a long ad. Yeah, but it's an ad, and I have to say, I, I think mostly my disdain is not for The Rock. I have great respect for him. It's for Siri. Mm -hmm. Siri is, and and by the way, notice while he was interacting with Siri, at least the part we saw, the only thing that was useful was that it got him a ride. What about taking a selfie? Uh, okay, and taking a <laughs> selfie, but popping up a list of your life goals that you can't read is not that useful. And I've found Siri to be more annoying in almost every time I try to use her. Uh, you know, the other day we were in uh, down by uh, Google in Mountain View, and when we were looking for a restaurant, and Siri, it's as if nobody at Apple ever uses Siri. The usability is terrible. I said, show me some restaurants. Uh, I want some restaurants near me. She started slowly reading the restaurants. I could see a list behind the card she kept popping up, but I couldn't get to the list and I didn't want to listen to her read it, so I tried to close her reading it, and it hid the list. And it was an exercise in frustration. Mm -hmm. And you feel like whoever designed this never uses it, or they would 
perhaps make it more usable. Or maybe they use it like I do, which is... To take a selfie. Open Google Assistant. And then... Here's what I found on the web for his open Google Assistant. <laughs> that drives me nuts. <laughs> so, yes, a Google Assistant to me is only one thumb All uh, she did away. was do a Google search for Google yeah. Assistant. Yeah, so, like, I just... This is what I do when I want Siri. I just do that. Um, and then talk to your Google Assistant. It's one button away, and it's super helpful. Um, yeah, super helpful. Like, I'm giving her compliments. So, yeah, but I do like The Rock, and... The Rock's funny. You're right. It was it was an ad. The series annoying. I mean, he, it sold The Rock for me more um, <laughs> than that it did Siri. And I have never called an, an Uber or a Lyft with Siri. Have you? No. <laughs> no. You just opened the app. Yeah. All right, so we have some feedback. You ready to so some feedback and questions? Greg writes, I watched your review of the Affinity Photo Program, which you showed on your show is $20. When I tried to purchase Ooh, it on Tuesday, yeah. the price was $20. We should have, yeah. I should have mentioned there was an introductory, special introductory mm -hmm. price uh, when they first came out with it. Yeah, so now it's $30. It's still worth it, I think, at $30. Okay. Although, I am increasingly of the opinion that all anybody really needs, if what you want to do is uh, is edit photos, is the absolutely free Snapseed from Google. And start with that. It's free, free, free. Mm -hmm. And it works great. Yeah, remember how I made Alex smile in that yeah. photo? I mean, what else I, could you want from I, a photo editor? Affinity is more like you got Photoshop on your iPad, and I find it difficult to use. It's challenging. You have, there's a real learning curve on mm -hmm. it. If you need that kind of tool, with layers and you know all that's and filters, but uh, I think Snap, Snapseed really is. Uh, the more I use it, the more I think, what am I wasting time with everything else? One of the reasons this comes up for me is because I'm I'm really thinking, as I've mentioned before, and it's the reason I got this case about not bringing a laptop on my next vacation, but just bringing an iPad Pro. And most of what I use a computer for on vacation, almost all of it, is photographs, is edit, is processing every night the stuff I took for the day, picking what I want, saving what I want, getting rid of what I don't want, processing it and posting it. And if I can do that on an iPad, and I'm thinking, you know, if I, would, I got Affinity, I got all these other programs. I'm thinking, really, all I really need is Snapseed. Yeah. I Wait. should show you a trick that I have that I did learn. Mm. Um, I'll just do this real quickly, then we can move on. But when you're uh, editing a photo, so here's a photo, and you go into Edit, um, there's this little button down here. You know, these are the basic edit tools, Enhance and Crop and... You can modify colors. But there's this little tool down here that allows you to add apps that you want to import it in. Now, I wish they had more. For instance, Snapseed is not on here. Uh, there are a lot of, I have a lot of photo editing apps, and the only ones that show up are Pixelmator and Flare Effects for some reason. But, and we've mentioned this before, Pixelmator, the new Pixelmator, has gotten so good that it is a reasonable alternative. These are all the filters. There's a lot you can do with it. This also is something to look at, perhaps, instead of Infinity Photo. Look, I made a kaleidoscope out of the microphone. That's kind of cool. I don't know what I'd do with it. But so, little little tip. That, that is cool. Isn't that? That's kind of cool. Little tip is, okay. is expand this three-dot menu and add the pro. I wish I could put Snapseed in there. Then this would be almost perfect. Because every time I import photos, into Apple Photos, you know, all the photos I import are there, but I would really like it if I could, uh, if I could just then edit right into Snapseed from here. And for some reason, it's not on there. It's probably a Google thing. Probably mm. Google needs to modify Snapseed. Probably. Sorry, I didn't mean to distract. No, you. Just, no, I, very, I, I, very. These helpful. things happen to me, and then I want to share them with you, and yeah. I wait till today. That's that's what the show is for. Uh, I like to share about my bullet journal as well, as you know. And I'm not just saying it. Tom Tom wrote to me and he asked. He said, I was looking to see how and what you were using the bullet journal for and if you were using the iPad or the iPhone in conjunction with the journal. No. I do. You do? A little bit, yeah. How? Yeah. Well, the bullet journal app, which I, I think... Um, so bullet journal is a written physical yes. journal that has some special tools right well let's step back bullet journaling that's a thing that's or a thing. bujo as we call it <laughs> bujo. those of us who isn't that the, the killer drink. dog from stephen that's king that's cujo okay bujo. bujo so bullet journaling is I just a quick bujo. system as you're seeing on the screen like bullets instead of having to write a bunch yeah. um and but you can also buy the bullet journal from of you know, course the, you can yes not that you need it 
No, you don't need it. And they, they're very clear about how you don't need it. And people do amazing things with the bullet journal. They keep their, you know, their life You're goals. You're slowly winning me over on this. Thing. I hope so. The thing I'm worried about is losing it. There's no right. backup. Well, uh, the bullet journal companion app. They now have come up with an app. I think I showed it, but you were on vacation. Um, so here it is, um, and it's basically for the iPhone, not for the iPad. But uh, you can uh, create a library. The library serves as your master index for all your notebooks. It allows you to easily catalog and search content throughout your library of bullet mm. journals. So you can add a journal and mm. you know add the start and the end date and done, and then you take photos of it. You add tags so you can find it later. So that is how I use it in conjunction with my iPhone or my iPad. Now, I, I, I finished my first bullet journal, which I started in January, and then now I'm using a Baron Fig journal. Have you heard of the Baron Fig? The Baron Fig? It's still the Boudreaux system. Is it bear system. like her? B -A -R or bear like it can't Baron, bear anymore? Like the, 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 the Baron, like the Red Baron. Figget? The, the Red, Red Baron. Baron. Mm. Baron Fig. Um, tools for thinkers. I have it uh, brought up now. I'm a real fan. Um there's a whole world of people. I have the 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 Vanguard hard the confident hardcover, and it has uh, the uh, what I like about it. I have the medium size, and it has the uh, the bookmark. You know, what? you need a database program to keep track of all your notebooks. It is a thing, and I love it. And I don't know. I've only been using it. It was a. It was you know. It was you know how Mark Zuckerberg has his yearly things like learn. Mandarin or creative. So these are pretty. Do you robot. have yours here? Uh, I have it in by my it's desk. In your office. Yes, I have so it. So this, Someone you do your bullet it. journal in this no, in this mm -hmm. red I Baron. do it. Yes, and the paper is thicker than the bullet journal, oh, I like so that. I can write with my pens that I like on the front and the back without it running through. Oh, I'd like to take a look at that sometime. Okay. okay. I like the little one because you could keep that in your yes. in your purse or you pocket. Could. Yes. I keep. I think I have the medium size one. Mine's about so you yay it tall. I carry it around, yeah. and I carry my last one around too because you know I just transitioned. <laughs> See, I would just like to do. It's, again, I'm just trying to get everything on here. If I just had to carry this, the iPad with me, and everything was on here, that would be interesting. I mean, you could. There's no reason you couldn't do a bullet journal on an iPad. You just no. do it in the even in the Apple Notebook program. If you had a pen, you'd make little dots and squiggles and X's and O's and all of the stuff that you... I like the feel of the ink coming out of the pen and onto the paper. We all have our things. That's mine. I think what happens is people get a little uh, burnout on technology, and they do. They want to go back. They want to take hikes. They want to use paper. They want to have a dial telephone. It's weird. Well, I mean, part of why I use the bullet journal is that I can be like mindful of what I'm going to yeah. do. I know I use that yeah. word a lot and then people are just like, oh. yeah. but uh, it means no, it's something to me. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes if I wanted to use this, I would be like, okay, I'm going to be mindful. And then like, oh, look at Twitter. I got to get, I just got distracted I, by distracting. Facebook. I, I agree. I got to check my text messages yeah. and then my mindfulness yep. out the window. Out the window. So... Yeah, thank you for writing about it, Tom, so that I could talk about it. I did not make up the Tom's bear email. He really sent the email. To and me. fig. No, Baron, Baron, B A R O N. Baron fig. Baron, like the Red Baron. Bear, the Baron, Baron Fig Pub. The book for <laughs> ideas. Confident. Wait a minute, confidant. The it's, confidant. It's not confident. Oh, the it's confidant, confidant. The confidant. Mm. Got it. All right. Uh, ready for another email? Yeah. Uh, Andre writes, since it's summer, would you have recommendations on some of the best apps for outdoor cooking or grilling? Oh, don't get me started, Bubala. How about we do that next week? <laughs> okay. Because I have become, you know, I think I think it's related. This, this show has become very deeply personal, and that's because we think of you as our close personal <laughs> you, friends. Yeah. But I think it's related to the, you know, I've been doing the intermittent fasting thing that all, it's all the rage in Silicon Valley and Hollywood. Uh, where you don't eat for a day and then you eat and stuff like that. And I, I really like it, but that's personal. It's my own mm -hmm. thing. But I do notice one side effect of that. I've become fascinated with food. Fascinated. <laughs> Especially on the days I'm not eating, food has its gravitational pull. So I've been spending more time thinking about food technology. And I got a sous vide machine and a vacuum sealer. I, we bought a dehydrator. I'm test And so many of these, and of course the big green egg and many of these analog cooking devices have digital 
sides, like the June oven where we have a, 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 an app for that. Or uh, my uh, sous vide machine, the Anova, has an app for that. So uh, my griller, I use the eye grill so I know what temperature and so forth. So yes, we could do that. I, it's, it's, uh, it's a nice... Inter and then, of course, we've talked about recipes before, but mm -hmm. let's do summer fun cooking. Summer apps. fun cooking. Okay. All right. Next week. All right. All right. I'm I'm in. Are you in? I'm I am in. I am in. All right. So now let's buy a house. What do you think? Get a mortgage. She's ah that yeah. Time. Well, if you're gonna buy a house, you know, you probably you know most people, at least certainly here in California, don't just come with a bag of cash. I'll take that house. You get a loan, right? A home loan. But it's very important when you're getting a home loan. Or if you have a loan and you're refinancing, now's a good time as the interest rates start to ratchet up. You might want to lock in the low interest rates today. Uh, it's important that you go to a lender that you trust, that a lender that's going to be helpful, give you the information you need. Nowadays, lenders, you know, I think I feel like they almost don't, you're just a, a number to them, right? And they sell your loan right away and you don't know who's your lender. I think there's a one lender that I really like, that they're transparent, they work with you, and they love geeks. And look at the website. You can go to rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. You go to the website. You'll see all the J.D. Power Customer Satisfaction Awards. They are beloved. They are highest in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination seven years in a row and mortgage servicing three years in a row. That pretty much guarantees you're going to the best. But now this is why I love it. They Quicken Loans has created Rocket Mortgage for us geeks, an entirely online mortgage process. And you get certain benefits. I'm not, you know, online, of course, it makes it fast and easy. But it's also more informational, more transparent. You know you're there. You're part of the process. You see it happen. You just come to a bank and, and let them go off. And, you know, you're faxing them documents. And it takes weeks. And you're there. You're in the process. You're doing it. You're picking your rate. You're picking your term. They, they can actually get all of the financial information they need. Uh, you just submit your pay stubs and your bank statements and so forth and so on. Right there on the app. You don't have to go get them. They have trusted partnerships with all the financial institutions. Then they crunch the numbers and they, they get a loan that's perfect for your financial situation. And they do that in minutes because it's, it's, all, it's all online. It's all computerized. So it's very fast. You know, some people like to go in and meet the mortgage officer and spend a long time with their home loan. And if that's you, yes, you can still do that. But frankly, for me, I want to do it fast. I want to do it online. I want to do it transparently. And I want to have the confidence in the lender. And that's what I think you're getting with Rocket Mortgage. Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Go to rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. Of course, equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states. Uh, NMLS Consumer Access .org, number 3030. Rocket Mortgage. Maybe you're not doing it today. Just make a note of that. Put that in your bullet journal. Put that in your bullet journal for when you do need a home loan. Rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. What happened? What, what do you mean? We're wearing hats all of a sudden. We are wearing hats all of a sudden. That's because it's app cap time. Oh. We're wearing caps. You're wearing a beret. A beret. It's I am app beret wearing, time. I am wearing an Andy cap cap. Actually, this is a Kangol, I think, isn't it? That's one of my favorite hats. Is it? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not. It's a pisty. Pistol. Ooh. Pistol. 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 So we're wearing... Uh, I don't know where this came from, but I like it. Mine's European like, hats. Yes, we're European today. Mm -hmm. My Hello, hat I'm a French goodbye. <laughs> that hat looks way better on me, but... Um, Is this your hat? No, that's your hat. I just like I it. love your hat. Oh, thank you. You look like Monica Lewinsky. So <laughs> you say cute. that every time, but I happen to be wearing the blue dress today, so... <laughs> um, uh, it's just the beret. I don't know what it is. It's okay. <laughs> Makes me feel like Bill Clinton. <laughs> It's, that's so sweet. Uh, let's talk about apps. <laughs> okay, that's why we're wearing these. This is to honor the apps of the week. Yes, to, on, to honor them. Okay, yes. so uh, on Tech News Today, we talked last week. I had Micah Sargent on from iMore, and we talked about some AR kit demos that we liked. And one of them that came up was an AR demo for food. And I said, why would you ever need that? That's ridiculous. Like, like hot you, dog or not? No. Not hot dog or not, but 
<laughs> I do. Uh, it's a good Silicon Valley restaurant uh, reference. reference. Yeah. But um, yeah. no, you're in a restaurant. Yep. You're kind of thinking like, I want to see my food before it comes to the table. And I just thought, Ugh. Can you? Yes. Well, the creator of one of these apps emailed me and he said, I'm a big fan of Twit. And let me tell you, here's how, why you'd want to do this. Have you ever been in a restaurant? And you yeah. think you're looking at the menu and you're like, what's bip and bap? Oh, or, it happens all the time. Yeah. Or like, you know, when you look over someone's shoulder, you're like, that looks good. Right. Um, you do do that. that. Yeah. yeah. So his app, it's still in beta. Um, and... It, it let's get to the beginning of it, and it is better on iPhone. Um, is it, it called, is called Bip and Bap? No, it's. Mm, I'll take this out because we, we don't need because we got wire okay. wire confusion. It's called Karak. Is that yeah? K K A or Kabak K A B A Q K A B A Q like shish kebab with a Q. Yes. So Not. do you want to go? Do you want to see the food at Tavern Sixty Two? Yeah. Oh, okay. so you pick a restaurant. Right. There's, there's This is just a few restaurants in New York right now. This is, you know, Eventually this is AR Kit just came out. So. Oh, this is this is with the AR yeah. Kit. Yeah. So do you want to do you look at... Show me what uh, one of these, like a like a, a lemon tart, I don't know. Chocolate s'mores Wait a minute, what's a lollipop tree? Oh, so, okay. Okay, we can find out about s'mores cake, but then I want to go back. Sitting comfortably. Yes. I want, Hot, just look at the screen so we can see where you're... Yeah, there we go. Yeah, enjoy. yeah, Enjoy... Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it might yeah, take yeah, a few yeah. seconds to okay. enjoy. I Should mean, I put my fingers in it? I mean, do we? No, I think we can. Well, <laughs> is that it right there? That's, that's not it. it. That's a delicious looking uh, thing. Enjoy. <gasps> there we go. <gasps> oh. So. Oh, it's on and the then, table. Well, maybe yeah. we should get my. Uh, yeah, maybe yeah. we have to. Have, yeah, let's. Yeah. We don't want to put it on our iPad. I don't want a cake on my iPad. And then <gasps> look at oh. that. Oh. Doesn't it look delicious? So is that, that is that. Is that the real thing? Uh, well, I think of. I guess it is the real thing. <laughs> Are you fasting today? Yeah, <laughs> and this is exactly the kind of food I can eat on a fast. Mm -hmm. Nothing. So, Imagine oh, it. Would you rather have lollipop that? tree. That looks like meringue. No, that's a chocolate vanilla cake. Oh my Ooh. gosh, I am really hungry. I haven't oh, eaten so you can flip today. through those. Ooh. There it is. That's Ooh. the lollipop. Oh, that is cheesecake lollipop that tree. Is lovely. See, you might read that in the menu, but would you know? Yeah. Oh. So this restaurant had to submit these images. Mm-hmm. So that the real deal. This is okay. I do like this. Yeah, I love it. I mean, this is the future. This isn't the present. You can't. I mean, we're, everybody's not being using these this today, but and know. it would make more sense in an iPhone than having to hold up. Yes, your you iPad wouldn't. Hopefully, that. you wouldn't have your yeah. Um, iPad. So yeah, I thank you. For writing me and um, augmented reality food, kabak, kabak, K -A -B -A -Q. Sorry for not getting the name right. It's kabaku. Kabaku, kabaku. Kabak. Well, the Q is capitalized, so yeah, I think maybe it's kabaku. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll find out. So, all yeah. the good names were taken. I sometimes I just say stuff where I'm like, "Who needs that?" But that <laughs> that's makes really sense. kind of fun. In yeah. fact, shouldn't that just be the menu? Yes. Like, forget mm -hmm. the, the printed menu. I should mm -hmm. just be able to browse my food. And you could do it at home first, too, to decide if you want to go there We're in an era now, and this is going to be this way for the next year, that because Apple's putting this empowering technology in iOS with ARKit, which is a developer's tool that makes it easy to do this. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Recorded using a Samsung Galaxy S7. Okay, so this is not ARKit, I guess, if he's using it. No, because he's recording it off of an oh. iPhone, see? Yeah. Well, wait a minute. That's on a Samsung. So maybe it is an AR kit. Yeah, I don't know. So, but the point being, I think we're going to see a lot of these experiments as we try to figure out what augmented reality is good for. Mm -hmm. That's a good example, though, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. Right. Yeah, and of course, augmented reality apps like this existed before AR kit, but they're getting... Not as easy to do. Not, and I, yeah. I feel like, and we'll know more in a month or two, Apple's going to design the new iPhone with features that make this better. Mm-hmm. So what you're seeing now is using existing hardware, but when the new iPhone comes out, I have a feeling it'll have uh, better cameras for this kind of thing, depth sensing cameras, things like that, that AR kit will automatically take advantage of. And I suspect this is going to be, well, I think it might be the next big thing. Apple certainly hopes so. Mm -hmm. How about you? I'm going to show you something that uh, is, I've, sh I've mentioned before, I've talked about, I've never made an app cap, and I realize I really should make it an app cap because this is something... We, we always tell you uh, that when you're using uh, Twitter or Facebook or Google, uh, that you should turn on two-factor authentication. So let me kind of quickly explain what that is. 
and then show you how to make it a little bit easier. So two-factor authentication is the idea that, you know, to get into a website to use your bank, you have to prove you're you. In the old days, you'd show them a driver's license or something like that. Online, you can't do that. So that's why now all of a sudden everybody needs a login and a password. The password is something you know. That's a form of authentication. There are actually three kinds of authentication, something you know, something you have, or something you are. And in if you're trying to be more secure, just something you know might not be enough. What if we had two factors, something you know and something you have, or something you know and something you are? Well, the fingerprint reader on your iPhone is something you are. It's your fingerprint. It's a biometrics. Iris scanner, which presumably face recognition will be in the new iPhone. It's in Windows today. Those things are second factors. So if you log in with a password and then it says, OK, but you have to prove you're you and you use a fingerprint, that's more than twice as secure. A hacker would, could guess your password or steal your password, but wouldn't have your fingerprint. Something you have is, as an example, your phone. And a lot of second factor uh, authentication schemes use your phone as a way to do this. Uh, perhaps you've seen the app Google Authenticator. It's an app that will generate a six-digit code that goes along with your password. So you'll log into your Gmail and it says, okay, first time you've used this device, and usually it's that way. It's only the first time you've used this device. You have to prove that it's used. It's not some hacker. I'm going to I'm gonna send you a text. Sometimes banks do that. Or launch your authenticator and tell me what your six-figure code is. So most people use Google's authenticator. Microsoft has an authenticator. LastPass has a lot of companies have authenticators. The one I use in my app cap for today is, is something called Authy, A-U-T-H-Y. And I use it be, for a couple of reasons. One, because it is uh, it stores your authentication tokens on the cloud, encrypted. You provide an encryption password that only you know. And that means you don't you can have Authy on all of your devices. Nowadays we have so many devices. You can have your Authy on all your devices, and that way you'll be sure to have access to your six-digit code. I want you to turn on two-factor. I want you to turn on Amazon. They just started adding it. I mean, you don't want somebody shopping on your behalf. I want you to turn on Google, Gmail especially. You want your email to be protected. Certainly, any banking, any financial things you do, you should have two-factor turned on. If they allow it, turn it on, and Authy will make it easy. Usually when you first set up two-factor, uh, they will give you what they're going to give you is a secret number, a very long number that's yours and yours alone. It's like your password. The bank knows it, you know it, and then these authenticating programs generate a six digit code based on the time of day and that long secret number. Uh, they hash them together to give it a six digit number. The reason they use the time of day is because that six digit number is only good for 30 seconds. In 30 seconds, another one and another one, and another one. That's great because somebody can't just observe your six-digit code and remember it and use it again. It can't be used again. It only be used that once. So I'm in Authy right now, and I'll show you. And I don't mind showing you my six-digit codes because they're not my passwords. You'd need my password and my six-digit code. One thing you want to do is this backup password reminder. Uh, you want it to, I don't have it turned on right now, but that's a password for you to log in. You'll also have a password, and you should make that one strong, to protect your six-digit codes. So the first time you use Authy on a new device, you'll have to enter that long Authy password, but it will then automatically know all of your accounts. So these are all the different accounts I use two-factor with. LastPass is on there, Google's on there, my Microsoft, Tumblr, Slack, WordPress. Uh, everything I can, I turn on two-factor, Snapchat even. Um, and, and, and this is my Amazon two-factor. So you see, this is going to expire in a couple of seconds, and then I'll get another six-digit code. So if you were going to log on to my Amazon account, you'd need my password, and then Amazon would say, okay, fine, and you've seen this before. Mm -hmm. You need to add this six-digit code. Authy allows you to press this to copy it to the clipboard, makes it easy to pa paste in if you're on an iPhone or an iPad. I like that. But I also uh, like it that I don't have to set it up on each and every device. Once it's set up on your Authy account, you log into your Authy account, and all of your two-factor um, uh, uh, secret numbers will be entered in here. So do you use, Is I saw LastPass Authenticator in there. So do you use Authy with LastPass Authenticator? I don't. In fact, I don't recommend LastPass Authenticator. Here's why. Uh, you don't want a single point of failure, right? So if somebody, the risk, uh, the reason you use two-factor is the risk that somebody gets your password. What if somebody 
it's unlikely. LastPass uses strong encryption. Only you have the key, et cetera, et cetera. But let's say one day LastPass is hacked. They get my password vault. Now, that's very risky because they have all my passwords now. And they manage somehow magically to unencrypt it. There's plenty of, of things that LastPass does to, does to prevent that. I don't want them, though, to also get my second factor information. And that will be stored with LastPass. So I keep those separate. And I encourage you to do that. It's fine to use Google Authenticator. That's a great one. Microsoft's Authenticator. The reason I use Authy is because I don't have to re-enter my information every time I set up a new device. And as you know, I set up a lot of new devices. Uh, it's safe. It's free. And it is anything that can make two-factor easier is a good thing, right? I really want to encourage people to use two-factor. So A-U-T-H-Y. It's available on iOS, of course, and Android. And if you want to know more, as you can see, the site has some good information, including that article on uh, uh, using Authy versus Google Authenticator. They functionally are the same. The big difference is with Google Authenticator, every time you have a new device, you have to set it up again. And But you should also know what the risks are of having a centralized database of of passwords. I feel comfortable with Authy, and, uh, and I do recommend it. Free and anything to make two-factor easier. Do turn on two-factor. And if you want to use somebody else's authenticator, like Google Authenticator, that's fine, too. Would, would you ever recommend doing more than one authenticator? Yeah, there's no reason not to. Actually, I don't have, you mentioned LastPass Authenticator. What you saw was LastPass. I don't have LastPass Authenticator. Oh, but I do I have Microsoft too. Authenticator. Oh, that's what and I'll tell you why I have Microsoft Authenticator on there. Uh, when you log into Windows, Microsoft Authenticator works the same way. You see, here's my eight-digit code generated by the Authenticator. But it also, and I think this is actually a better way to do it. Google started doing this too. If you have the Authenticator installed on your device, and I have it installed on my devices, you will see a push notification that says, oh, you just tried to log in on Windows on this device. Is that okay? And you just say yes. And Google's now doing that too. You might have noticed that when you give mm -hmm. a Google password, it will then prompt you on your, if you have an iPhone, it'll say, open up the Google app to say yes. That's easier than entering six mm -hmm. digits. And in, in some ways, it may even be more secure. So uh, that's, but it's again, something you have, right? It won't work unless you have your phone. So a bad guy would have to get your password and your phone uh, or your password and your iPad, whatever you have these authenticators on, in order to get into your account. That's why you want to do that. It's more than twice as safe. Is there an Authy app for the Apple Watch? Uh, yes, there is. You, uh, in fact, in, also Authy shows up in your uh, in your uh, notifications as well. Mm -hmm. So, I, if you want, if you really want to be a time saver, you can actually add Authy to those pop up notifications here on the iPad or the uh, iPhone. I don't do it because I, you know, I just don't. But yeah, and you can have it on the Apple Watch as well. But it will only show a, a small subset of the total. Mm -hmm authentications and as you can see i have quite a few so i end up launching the app i feel like it's security and passwords are like flossing now like you gotta do it even though it's annoying and, and you don't have time for it the good news is the day is soon coming i hope that we can get rid of passwords you know you think about it we didn't have passwords when we were kids the, maybe you had to remember a couple of things your, your your street address your home phone number and your locker combination that's it mm-hmm now we're expected to remember hundreds and hundreds of passwords for every website we log into. It's just not practical, and there are some real security issues involved. So we, we're going to come up with a better way, I think. But mm -hmm. for now, this is a good thing. We have done it again. We, have we? We have done it again. We have iOS this week. It's all done? I think so. Do you have okay. anything else? Well, no. I mean, email me at Megan at twit.tv if we uh, missed anything or if you want to add anything or if you have suggestions for outdoor cooking apps. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. In fact, if you want to send us a video of you grilling something, that'd be great. Just mm -hmm. keep it under 30 seconds. Uh, start the video with your first name and city. Don't tell us your last name. We want to protect your privacy. Uh, and uh, you can put it on YouTube and send us a link mm -hmm. at, again. Megan at twit.tv. Mm -hmm. Yep. We do this show. It's our new time. I hope uh, for those of you who like to watch live, you uh, noted that we now are on Tuesday mornings, 9 a.m. Pacific. Actually, it's noon Eastern time. Uh, or if you're you know, somewhere else in the world, the UTC is 1600 UTC. So you can do the math and figure out what time that would be for your locale. We'd love it when you watch live. And if you do, join us in the chat room, irc.twit.tv. You can do it in your browser or get an IRC client. Yes, we use old-fashioned IRC, and it's always fun. We see the IRC uh, chat go by the whole time we're doing the show. So your comments and thoughts, as you can see, we often refer to you 
are much appreciated there. If you don't want to watch live on-demand audio and video is available at our website. That's true of all of our shows, twit.tv slash iOS for this show. Best thing to do, though, you know, is find whatever way you listen to um, podcasts or watch podcasts because we have audio and video. Uh, subscribe. And that way you'll get every episode automatically with the minute it's done. And you can uh, just listen to it uh, on your way to work on Wednesday or however you like to listen. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on iOS Today. This is when we, we throw our, our hats. Is that what we do? Yeah, that's what we do.